everyone. Welcome. Okay. Hey. To the Tap Haven Podcast. It's been a while. Where we're going to talk about malt balls. No, we're not. What? Stop. <laughs> I have moth balls. <laughs> we need to stay on track. No, no, no. no. But no, no, not Anthony. moth balls. <laughs> malt balls. Malt? Have you ever had malted no, no. milk balls? No. I, like I, I've never balls. had, I've never had malted, malted milk balls in my mouth. I think you've had mouth. them, but they're not called that. No. They're, they're the, malt balls. They're literally called malt balls, I think. <laughs> they're called Look Whoppers, up, dude. Candy. Whoppers. That's a, that's a thing. Have you had oh, Whoppers? Oh, yeah, shit. I have I may have had Whoppers crunchy. at some point in time, but I feel like... But if you don't crunch them, yeah, they yeah. soften up. And then I've had those. Horrible if you don't like the weird texture. Wait, so how do you crunch them if you're gonna if you're going to chew them? That doesn't make any sense. Well, the inside's got like this crunch so to it. If, like so there's a thing that happens to me. It's of. probably an OCD mm. thing where if I bite through it, it might feel mm. like nails on a chalkboard. So I will instead have to let the Ooh. chocolate melt in my mouth and then let the malt get a little bit squishy. And then it doesn't do the horrible mm-hmm. nails on a yeah. chalkboard thing. So Sometimes. you have to take your time with this candy is what you're telling me. Well, I'm the exact opposite okay. of it too because I love that crunch on the malt, uh, the Whoppers. So I like oh, to like, no, crunch into it me. as quickly as I possible. I like to crack it open like a like a rock, like I'm a mm-hmm. fossil digger person, right? And it splits in half. Yep. It splits and on then half. you turn it on its side. Yes, yes. And then you But let if it I melt. bite too fast and hard like Vegeta trying to crack eggs, then it's horrible because then it's nails on a chalkboard. So you just got to like... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Full circle. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, I don't remember any of that, but can any? Could you describe what malt, the f- malt flavor palette is? Because there has been some news that came through for some of our favorite people in the bourbon world that have dropped some great sounding bourbon. But I don't know what malt necessarily tastes like. I don't know. Like maybe I haven't had that many childhood memories of like having a malted milkshake or something like that. To but me, I, I just don't malt remember the is flavor. As palette. if you like, took it milk to that spoiled, and instead of spoiled milk, it went the opposite direction. It like got better, dude. <laughs> it's almost like so we got milk. milkier. If you've ever had kind of, um, I think where he's getting, if you've ever had paneer that's unflavored. Okay. And not like crispy. So you don't get the umami flavor that comes when you like sear it. Mm -hmm. It's just that soft, uh, almost milky cheese type of flavor, but it's not sharp like cheese. It's like this super soft milky sweet it's not sweet that's the thing all the sweetness is kind of like gone from it so something like a whopper adds sweetness back in with would sugars you, would you say it's like it adds mouth texture to it mm, no or i would diff- say more different- it has a almost like a funk to it but like a, a flour good milk funk. Like, okay. So, so good. when we've had the, the, yeah, I mean, Anthony's kind of on, like, <laughs> on how I would think it's about it, too. Milk, but it tastes yeah. good this time. Is, it's funky milk, but it tastes good Yeah. And so we've had some single malts on the podcast now. Yeah. And those single malts really do epitomize what the, that, like, malt flavor comes Got down you. to. Okay. Okay. And it's definitely a hard flavor to explain in my okay. opinion comparatively to some to others me, that have very direct corollaries it's kind of like because a eggnog but without all of the seasonings in it like no nutmeg no like heavier eggnog flavor there's like a base layer of malt in in some eggnogs i think okay yeah i could see that almost like a uh, yeah, like an yeah. eggnog, an unsweetened eggnog. It's similar to that. Okay. Well, r- reason why I asked is because Frey Ranch dropped a new line of, well, I guess an, uh, a 
different line? No, new line of bourbons and whiskeys. Oh, no, just straight up whiskeys across yeah. the board. Um, they have the 100% wheat and 100% oat whiskey. And then they have the quad malt and the 100% malted corn. And you cannot get the wheat and oat at the moment, which was what I was originally going to go for because that was the single yeah. grain options. But they also had a malted grain series, which is the quad Bro. malt and the malted corn. I'm not a huge fan of corn. But I'm going to go for the quad malt. But I was like, what is malt? And that's kind of what brought up this question. But um, I will probably try and uh, have some kind of problem. malt uh, candy they or something. Have a single barrel what, 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 rye. Oh. Yeah. I know. We and it's wanna, like we wanna crazy. Get it. Yeah. Yeah. We want to get it. It, 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 it uh, It's holy grailish. Uh, it's like. It's up there. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely am going to get it at some point. I, I don't know when. Definitely Maybe it, going to get. Give it. me, give me like two months, and then like we can pull the trigger on work. that. Don't be gone. <laughs> the, oh God! Single barrel. Wait, so, Do you all not remember no. what a single barrel is? That's just like what happened well, with the well, new riff. No, no, I no, no, no. I so it's barrel twenty five twenty one. Okay. There's only one but of them. But they're gonna story. have more. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> so on their site, they're doing a particular select for sure. But I have seen their single barrel rye in this store. So other stores are going to get single what barrel rye. What are you talking about? There's no such thing as free so range we'll in the store. This is single Farmer Direct. <laughs> this is number 2521, though, Eric. It's number 2521. Hey, oh. okay. That's, that's all fair. All fair. <laughs> Look. I will Glad. get out the credit card if y'all need me. No, 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 no. Do Don't it. do oh, this do because then do I have to keep it. up with do everybody. It. I can't. Do can't. I guess just it's came in the back card already. I'm, I'm actually wow, pressing sir. buy. Sir, sir. No. <laughs> it's sir. <in> my card. <laughs> call Air Anthony. Call B. <laughs> <laughs> no, Anthony's like, happening? I already bought it, by the way. What's checking out? It's <laughs> happening. <laughs> Uh, surrounded by look, Frey Ranch buyers. very quickly became my favorite <laughs> bourbon no. maker in the world. <laughs> I mean, they're it's, they are killing it. They are killing it for sure. Speaking of killing it, what have you guys been I'm up been to? Anybody. Obviously, you've been having a wonderful time as compared com- as compared to what's going on in Houston. I don't oh, know yeah. if you guys kept track of it, but you got. I know that you guys like tapped in a few times. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been like the past three weeks since have the been hurricane, really crazy. crazy. Since yep. the hurricane, like, so we had the uh, named weather event. It's apparently not a Jericho. I completely uh, misaligned that. So for anybody who was a weather nut, was like, actually, that's not what it's called. Sorry about that. Uh, don't remember the name, but we had that, and then like literally two weeks after, we had Hurricane Barrel come through. Uh, Fast moving hurricane, pretty Sorry. much knocked out I'm, our power. I'm not laughing at you. Like, I'm laughing because I googled Jericho because yeah. I was like, oh man, I've seen a show called Jericho. It's really great. And I guess uh-huh. okay, this uh-huh. isn't the definition of a Jericho. Now you're gonna have to explain to us because I read a nuclear mushroom cloud, and I was like, no. What is a Jericho? No, no that's not. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So Jericho is not what this. uh weather body was but it was because of the number of like weather events that occurred while the storm was happening that it got classed as oh. this uh weather event i'll look it up later and and, and so the I'll hurricane happens the and then a tornado time. comes but through? anyway so tornado came through well tornado and storm pretty much came through and just like n- messed us up uh, then Houston was like, oh, we're, we're good. We're fine. And then barrel came and knocked out all of our power. And we were out for a week. And some people were out for two or upwards to two. And a lot of, and that's why y'all left. It just yeah. sucked. It just sucked so hard. I we gave up like the third day, like third fourth day. We're like, this is ridiculous. Like, yeah, I can't, we can't stay in this house and like burn alive while, while my dad's house is fully powered through his gas generator um, that he's installed himself. So I was like, you know what? Forget this. 
So we, we abandoned ship and headed over there. And then right as we were leaving for our trip to the Philippines, hmm. power came back. So it's like, hey, we know you're leaving. But uh, by the way, that power's coming back. But yeah, store came through, knocked us, knocked us all for a loop. Uh, flooding is still a problem Jeez. because we're getting crazy, crazy yeah, rain. You sound like you could use a drink. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no i went i went to so i went to the philippines as well um beautiful if anybody's uh, thinking of going to the philippines please do um the island of palawan is beautiful it is one of the few islands that is still quote unquote virgin meaning that it has not been like completely um commercialized so you'll actually go there have a decent t- time finding space to like stay and you won't be overcrowded with people like it's super nice only problem is you have to go during slow season if you go during during like up season it's insane when's the up yeah. season i mean when's uh, the slow season slow mm. season is like right now slow season is like from right now uh all the way over to um I believe December because they, they experience the same kind of uh, weather that we do, or at least like they're, they're dude. I forgot. These were sitting right next to me. I just looked up at what I Googled and I was like, wait a second. I was using this for work the other day. What a pull, man. That's hilarious. What a pull, man. That was unbelievable. Holy moly. (laughs) He was literally like, hold my beer. I'm so uh, sorry. You know what? I'm done with my story. <laughs> some, some, oh, somebody go it. after me. I, I don't think my ADHD <laughs> oh, can keep man. up. man. That's hilarious. I, I don't have anything else. Uh, trip to the Philippines was amazing. Oh, I'm glad to be home, though. That's, nice. all, that's that's what I got. Hey, I'm oh. I'm hyped for the trip to the Philippines. Uh, not oh, God, as hyped we have for one problem, stuff, though. Hopefully. Oh, I worry. It's for, some, out, for some people among us, they're probably What's terrified that? of your slightly open closet and the monster behind you. <laughs> oh that's shit yeah. no look at no. this guy right here you Stop. see the face right here why would He's you sick. say that why would you do that now people will be looking for the rest I hate of the you so live much. show i hate you so much dude I my should intrusive attach thoughts a sh- with that kind of stuff is dude, so bad i should it's, attach a string next time to the to the middle like the little piece right in here funny. and just start pulling it below so you can't funny. see it and it like opens Y'all, it's not funny, y'all, Eric. Y'all should Why never are you laughing? Have kids. You're disgusting. <laughs> You'll traumatize them. <laughs> You'll terrorize them. Absolutely not. I'll Absolutely traumatize not. them. <laughs> oh, man. Anthony, what uh, you been up to, well, my guy? Cal got out. How many times have I told y'all that Cal's got out? None. Oh. None. This None. is the oh, okay. first Cal. Well, one, first yeah, time. Several weeks ago, one cow kept getting out, and then she would just mysteriously be on the other side of the fence and be like what the hell she'd give us a look just like one of our dogs uh yui because she and yui and my wife have the same soul um (laughs) so she's very sassy um yeah so she just kept getting out and then i'd have to guide her back in and it became a thing until I found out where she was getting out because she didn't break the fence. She went under it and then it was still there. Yeah. Um, so I had to secure it. The cow yeah. went under the, the fence. The fence that we have. No. The, is this it's, barbed um, wire fencing? It's like a, I don't know if it's okay, chicken okay. wire. It's not chicken wire. It's a uh, hog wire, but it's not. It's, I don't know if it's as sturdy as proper hog wire or if it really is called hog wire, but it's a bunch of squares like this big, like two inch squares oh, or God. something like that. Um, but we didn't put together the original fence. We just like fixed it up a bit. Yeah. And there's a lot Inherited of like, it. yeah, I mean, it's a long fence. So there's a lot of parts that aren't great. Um, but it was a relief once we fixed that. And then, oh, and additionally, they're they're little cows. Like this one's six months old. So, if she was a full grown oh, so cow, okay. there's no going okay, under okay, it. Okay. The fence is just gone. There's no way. <laughs> like, yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I just, I, that Makes one was sense. an easy fix. But uh, then a few days ago, I swear. Yeah, it was like Thursday. It was on Thursday. It was about 830 at night. And I hear dunk, 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 on the door. And I'm like, what the heck? Because, you know, I'm from Atlanta. And when someone does that, you call the cops. Because, <laughs> because. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Atlanta. That means I'm, I mean, I have okay. I've had Continue. multiple occasions when Continue. someone has tried to break and enter and stuff like that. And so my first reaction was, "Where's my gun?" Because <laughs> this is not going to be good. Um, Makes sense. And then Ashley's For like, sure. "I think that's a neighbor." I'm like, "I've never seen him before. You think it's a neighbor?" She's like, "Yeah." And so I go and I'm about to open the door, and he goes, "Your cow's out," and I'm like, "Shit." And so I said, let me go grab my stuff. And, you know, I run out there. And this time, uh, the cow, the first cow that had gotten out was like in the woods. Not as big of a deal. This cow was like right oh, next to the street. No. <laughs> and yeah, so I, I ran down and I started to guide her down the street while Ashley lured her with some, uh, some, some of their feed. No, they have like a special hey. feed that it's like a vitamin. Yeah. It's like a nutra it's almost like a daily vitamin but you get it every other day but it's it's sweet okay it's got like okay basically sugar on it or something uh, it's not sugar but it's like a, a okay a sweetness on it so they love it um otherwise it would taste like chalk i guess anyways we're guiding the cow down the street and at one point she just stops and starts eating like she's at a trot and she just randomly stops and starts eating i'm like does that smell really good or something like that uh i talked to my father-in-law about it and he was like no they do that they just they like to mess with you they're they're <laughs> yeah they're very wait so savage. it's like it's yes, like very smart intentional like there's been times when one was like the bull was messing with something, trying to like get out of the fence and see if he could break it. And then he just yelled at the bull, like, stop that. And then it immediately stopped because it knew it was doing something that it wasn't supposed to be doing. It wasn't yeah. supposed to. Gotcha. So, but that was fun. We ended up getting it back in. It almost tried to go into the neighbor's yard and it was a whole fiasco. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like you do. And then you know, the next fun, day, whatever. I found a giant, two giant holes in the fence, which were like the fence was torn apart. So both of these cows had gone under the fence and just like wedged them their way out. Okay, that's fine. No big deal. And I fix, I fixed that. <sighs> but the next day, Friday morning, when I'm fixing the fence, I see next to our apple tree, close to where like we park cars. There is two holes in the fence and it's like literally torn apart. Like the, the metal has been torn apart. I sent a picture to Ashley while she's at work and my father-in-law and he's like, cows can't do that. They're not strong enough. I was like, are you sure? Like he, Shit. Like we've been feeding, uh, uh, Ashley's named, uh, the steer apple jacks. Uh, we've been feeding him a lot of apples cause he loves them and he's always begging for them now. <laughs> What if he just tried to get it? He's like, no, they, they, they're not strong enough to do that. That, that, that was probably a bear. <laughs> it's probably a bear getting the apples. Yeah. And get this. The night before that happened, I was brushing my teeth and I get a notification. Someone's on the back doorstep. Ashley had decided to go outside by herself in the middle of the night, like 11 o'clock at night and go and like check on the cows. I'm running out there with this whole situation because that just that night mind you like before she goes out there like an hour or two before that i had to go outside and check on what was happening because the cows got spooked they ran away from where they like to sleep i go out there and every dog nearby is barking like crazy and i was like there's something out there there's like coyotes or a bear or whatever there's something out there hour later ashley goes outside by herself i run out and i'm like what are you doing get over here (laughs) she's like i'm checking on the cows i'm worried about them i'm like ash get in here and then fine later that night (laughs) something was right where she was standing literally where she was standing to to try and see all the cows is where the holes are and i'm just like please don't go outside by yourself at night (laughs) 
you got bear you got a you got a bear hunt yeah. into your cows there but yeah, that's been the that's been the most exciting thing and we uh okay. we lost a giant tree so that's kind of sad but <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah that's how they tree. get it like uh, but down. hopefully we can turn it into oh, wow. things like like a table Not yeah a bar. repurposing mm-hmm, yeah, yeah that'd be dope yeah. Hey. Oh, and I got a 3D printer. Go for it. Oh, and I got a 3D printer. Oh, nice. Nice. What, uh, which one? Did yes, you get a bamboo, bamboo lab? P1S. Yes, bamboo. Oh, my gosh. Dude, they're so good. Bamboo oh, lab kinda, stuff is Y'all so kind of can't see that. Do y'all know what that bamboo is? Bamboo lab. It's a Beyblade. It's a Beyblade, right? Dude, yes. Wow. You got a bamboo, bamboo lab, lab P1S. Jesus Christ. Oh, oh no, P1S. Not, the, not the carbon 3D. Okay, P1S. Yeah. Okay. But okay. bamboo lab does it's insane. the highest. I've had almost no problems. I like. I've had a few problems, but that's only a PETG. Yeah. Hey. Eight. Yeah. Fifty. Y'all are just a different ballgame. Is that with the AMS? Okay. No, that's what, the AMS. that's what the AMS. It's like 550 oh, okay. without the yeah. AMS. The AMS is like oh, okay. a okay. auto. The AMS is like you can change colors mid switcher or yeah. something like that. Yeah, no, not worth. Yeah, I think if I get another um, printer, although my next printer will actually probably be a resin printer rather than a um, FDM printer. But if I get another FDM printer or like I sell mine, then I'll probably get the carbon, uh, the X1 carbon. It's just Jesus no, you Christ. Wait dude, it's so until dope. Until they come out it's with their new one. Cool one. Because they're coming out with a bigger oh, 100%. one. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. But no, I, I just mean like that line would be my next one for sure. Got you. Got you. Got you. Well, cool. Eric. You're so, up. What have you man. been doing for three weeks, man? So Shit. I dro- oh, it, It's been a long. So I dropped part weeks. of it, but the thing that I we just printed. This is actually the reason we bought it. Is this? So Ashley three three D modeled this stuff, <laughs> and these all pieced together, because I have a twenty three inch wide like small window here, and we inherited a portable AC unit. I haven't oh, been yeah, able to put the portable yeah, AC yeah. unit through this window because it's too, the pieces that came with it are too big. And so literally the printer pays for mm-hmm. itself and giving me the ability to have AC in my office <laughs> during the summer. Cause I'm already starting to sweat. Yeah. Easy, so that easy yeah, purchase. I've wanted one forever, but I was just like, look, it, that literally pays for itself. Cause if you wanted to buy another fucking AC unit, yeah. that's just, they're so expensive. It's, it's gonna it's, be in now. It's so nice for yeah. so many different things, for sure. Eric, uh, three weeks yeah. quickly. Yeah. I'm getting so, thirsty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess the 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 biggest thing uh, that's been over the three weeks, and probably why I've been like out of communication, really, is because in most of my free time, I've been training for what I did this past weekend, which was the U.S. Open for judo. Woo! So I flew down to Fort Lauderdale and competed all weekend. Came in second in both my divisions. Nice! So close to getting gold, but I should have gotten gold in one of them. I had the guy beat all intents and purposes. He couldn't throw any. I literally could have done nothing for the rest of the fight, and I would have won. But But I tried for a throw, and I messed it up by a little bit, and pretty much threw myself. Oh, Eric. And lost it. I was I was so frustrated. But but for everything else really, I I was beating him for all other Why is the US Open cases. so close to the Olympics? Um, we've Um Well, so interestingly enough, by the time that a better way to frame it is actually that there are A few types of judo competitions. You have the regional, you have the national, and you have the international events. Regional, national, international, got it. If you want to go and do the Olympics, you have to get points from the IJF, which is the International Judo Federation. Makes sense. They host international events. 
these international events, you got to travel around and do almost all of them, really. Because to go to the Olympics for most countries, you have to be top 25 in the world ranked. Makes sense. That's a deal. Yeah. And so you have to get enough points and prove that you are top 25, essentially. Hmm. By the U.S. Open does give you points. So, for example, last year's U.S. Open could have gotten you points for this Olympics. Okay. But a lot of the time, people are training for all of these other different events and doing other international events. The U.S. Open is only one of the 200 large events that occur, you know, throughout the year. Okay. So you have a lot of really great fighters that go to the U.S. Open. And some of the top 25 in the world are going to end up there. Not this year, obviously, because most of them are at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Um, But you have a lot of retired Olympic fighters that were there. Makes sense. So I think it just kind of lucks out that it happened at the same happens around the same time every four years. But. I don't know particularly why they chose that date. Hmm. Interesting. But yeah, because it's only and the US Open is only a national event. There are a lot of international fighters that go there, but it's a national level event. Is it televised? No, you can Uh, go and they stream it through the uh, smooth comp and stuff like that. So you can Mm -hmm. go and see a lot of those fights live but they don't televise it makes sense okay then you didn't tell us to watch your stream eric i i did that's fair i didn't i didn't think about it i didn't Mm. think about it Mm. to be fair i think the smooth comp uh streaming service is kind of terrible in a lot Mm. of ways anyways interesting really annoying to navigate Mm. but they should do better. I think judo in general is dropping the ball. I was actually talking to Josh about this. They are dropping the ball on streaming YouTube and all of these other things. Because it's, like it's a dynamic sport. Like, dude, it, it could create gold. It could pay for itself in dividends. Yeah. If you had one good community manager at an event. Yeah, because it's like you can just don't do it. It sells for itself. Like I mean, like you have names that show up at at in judo competitions that like consistently put up like stellar performances, and it is a performance. So makes sense. Yeah, unfortunately. uh, uh, But yeah, so I fought this weekend. I think uh, there were a lot of really good fights. It was a lot of fun. The whole (laughs) we can uh, can tell team was it? Yeah, I'm. I'm roughed up, um, as as people can tell. I, it, you know, people who don't do judo probably haven't felt a tatami mat, but real tatami mats, they have this ridged pattern that feels nice when you're like walking on it and doing mm-hmm. all these other things because it's so finely intertwined. But if you put your ha- like pressure onto it and rub against it, it can it very cuts. easily create mat burn. And so Oof. that's what all this is. This is all just mat burn from like oh, my face being over the mat. Man. So it burns in the shower, but otherwise so pretty it's superficial. Fine. Weird okay. and stupid annoying thing about okay. migraine is I saw an Instagram post by your wife at the beach and I was like, oh, Eric must be at a volleyball competition this week. And then I still even saw the post about you on the podium. But because I'd already seen the beach thing, and even while yeah. we've been on this call, I've been like, he really got fucked up playing volleyball. <laughs> and, and like, it just like was like concrete in my mind that you got oh, fucked up funny. playing volleyball, even though I'm sitting here listening to you talk about doing judo until like two oh. seconds ago. I'm like, oh, that's why that's, his face that's got hilarious. Hurt. I was yeah. looking poor I, judo boy. I mean, but yeah. you know it's not poor. Okay, one one other thing before we open this up, because this is why I need a drink right here. Okay. So I'm not the uh, for people for the audience. I'm not. I I don't really like flying. I'm not a big flyer. No, I'm not not. particularly like scared of flights, but I get super anxious and it's mostly like a control thing 
when I'm on small planes and like I can see what the pilot's doing or I can hear ATC and I know what their like process is, I'm fine. But when I'm kind of left in the dark on commercial flights, it just, it, it drives me insane in my head because I know how incompetent some people are <laughs> and that incompetence gets my brain going and my brain goes into overdrive and I'm like, ah, well, I don't, uh, that's the type of thing. So we're, we're flying to Fort Lauderdale on Friday afternoon. Uh-huh. We get in this plane and they're like, yeah, it'll, it'll be a little uh, rough going up. We're, we're going to pass through some clouds and then we'll be pretty good. We get up. It's a little rough. I'm like, man, that wasn't that bad. We get up top. We're cruising. I have downloaded a bunch of high queue, rewatching it. And so we're nice. just chilling, watching some high queue. And then right when we have about 40 minutes left on the flight, they go over the intercom and they're like, everybody, just go ahead and buckle your seatbelts. We're going to go through a patch of rough air. And the next 15 minutes was a roller coaster ride. I oh, shit you not. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> legitimately, I had the, alt, the you know, you could, they have the flight tracker. And Delta yeah. has a little thing where you can see the gauges, see the, like, how high you are, see the, like, angles. Oh, no, and they gave you too much information, I, Eric. I literally, <laughs> I looked up, and then shit went wild. I looked back up, and every number was different. Nat, every number was different. I was like, what is, what happened? <laughs> they gave you too much information, oh Eric. Gosh. You were just my, supposed to, like, you were just supposed to freaking ride through it, man. man. My, Your my wife, who does international flying all the time. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> and she is the the best flyer. She, like, passes that. She was scared of this flight, guys. That's oh, how bad this shit, shit was. That's not good. Yeah. Like, when the person who usually I, flies is like, oh, no, this is bad. <laughs> yeah. When, you, when your plane ride turns in, like, I kid you not, we were in free fall for, like, 8,000 no. feet or something like that at one point. No. Dude, free fall? Yes. Dude, it was like we lifted up and then it like poof, and we went straight down mm -hmm. and then it caught and then it went back up and he had to like course correct to get back up. Like, And this shit was wild. It was a sm small jet, right? Small vessel. No, this was a 737. Dude. <laughs> like, this shit was wild. So let's drink through this because Man. my fight was also Andrew's ass. Just like, how long? Oh my God. Anthony's had to fight off like 15 hours. Dude, guys, I will never fly overseas to, to anywhere other than first class. I refuse to do it. I'm sorry. Call me bougie. I don't care. I don't know what it's going to cost. I will never do commercial again. Oh my God. Guys. I'm telling you right now, I'm flying to India later this year. I am uh, going to a doctor and I'm getting something that will make me not remember the flight. That's all Eric, to it. Eric, Eric, I'm telling you right now, there's no amount of medications that's going to get you through that flight. Oh, dude, people are they're gonna, they, I'm going to be that person where they have to call the ambulance <laughs> and they touch down to like, Eric, you don't need to go to the doctor. <laughs> to wake me up. He's like, been trying to, to go do to scuba. <laughs> get some horse tranquilizer. Uh, yeah, it's oh, that's fair. That's fair. Eight. Okay, what are we starting with, guys? So today we are doing three of the advent calendars to make up for uh, so this missing three a part few weeks. Cutting so we now for the first part. Different. Yeah, it's <laughs> part <laughs> one. Randomly, uh, you're gonna do advent an exercise of the worst number cuts eight. in TV. Okay, ever. don't stop. Like cliffhanger. <laughs> now, oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like a wipe. <laughs> but like one of the really bad wipes that has no blur, so there's just like a solid not, line in between. So not the Star Trek, not the Star Wars wipe, just like completely no. like PowerPoint. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> so I will say one thing that I want you to do okay. is do not look at the page. I forgot for there was 10. a book. Okay. No, Don't look at the page go, for ten. We're not doing ten. Yeah. Are eight, we doing ten? We're doing eight, nine, and ten. Okay, we're doing eight, nine, and ten. Okay, never mind. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. Cool. Don't, look, Don't at look at the page, page for, for number ten. 10. I because I, I, I want to do a little experiment. Okay. But we have three very different whiskeys. So today we are going to go through Woo! a scotch whiskey first, <laughs> a rye second, and then 
Okay. A finished bourbon third. Interesting. So, wow. Yeah. The smell on that first one was so strong. So very They're, different whiskeys. I've I've looked at the I looked at the page and I was like, this is I think this is the most wow. things that they've ever like yeah, they noted a, on the did you guys, a lot of stuff. stuff. Now a did lot you guys of watch these are very what I sent you on how to properly drink Ooh. whiskey. First you gotta swirl it around. No. You both have. I thought you weren't open, supposed open to swirl it. it. So what you what you well, uh, so I, look, man, I haven't seen the video yet, <laughs> but you do actually want to swirl it and the, the, you do the, want to swirl it just okay. a little bit. And the reason is for the aromatics that on the side of that glass, the alcohol is going to evaporate very quickly from that film of liquid mm, on the side of the glass. Got you. When that alcohol evaporates, it's going to leave behind a layer of oils and aromatics that are more easily distinguished comparatively to the alcohol. Boys, that that boy is peaty. Gentlemen, I actually, that- I get a little bit more of the smoke at first. Really? It's very smoky. I'm getting a lot of peaty, baby. And I actually get a... a a fruitiness to it a little bit. I think the apple, they so Definitely their the tasting notes kind of go through this uh, barrage of different <laughs> barrage of aromas. <laughs> May right. I just share with you it's the first 10 seconds go of this for video? It. Because I swear go to God, it. I have referenced this and sent it to you guys like 20 times now. All right. Oh, no, I have seen like this. Like a sir. I have seen this. <laughs> Throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, okay, Anthony. I did see this when you sent it to me. I have seen this before. It is great. Hi. Matt, if you haven't seen that, you need. How to, are you? Watch the whole thing. It's fine. Thanks. <laughs> it is. It is really Throw it swirled out. bottle. Throw it out. Yeah, if you have not seen that full thing, go to our tech group text and, and, and enjoy because it gets even. Funnier. Oh, that's good. Oh, man. The peatiness on this is crazy. Okay. Okay. So th- I was going to say, like, I'm getting a lot of peat. I'm definitely I catch what it, uh, Eric's saying about the uh, apple for sure. They say general fruit. And I'm like, guys, I understand that you're trying to like give the full breadth of the nose as well as the flavors. No, you know what fruit it is? It's is a general a fruit because it's fruit roll really up isn't. right there. It smells like a fruit roll up that you just rolled out in, in fourth grade. Is it a, wait, is it? A, it even looks like it, a fruit roll up on their taste, image. Uh, sorry, I haven't tasted oh, it yet. Yeah. It actually does smell like processed fruit mash. Kind of like a fruit roll up, but a little bit more natural than a fruit roll up. It doesn't have okay. a corn syrup, uh, a real smell fruit. to it. Okay. But it has is anybody that, making like a genuine fruit like roll paste, up, like, like all natural, paste. no corn syrup? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. No no roll up. I don't know if a company. I don't know if a company has. Yeah, but it's actually yeah. pretty easy to make. You you just you like blend up different fruits together. You add a little bit of water, and then you add either a gelatin if you don't mind an animal mix, or agar agar if you want a non-animal mm-hmm. mix. You roll it out onto a, a full baking sheet, and it's done. Yeah, and you're and pretty you, much you done. Dry if you want to cure it yeah. first, <laughs> then <laughs> it'll it'll look. It won't look. Oh no, it'll, it'll taste way be better colorful. than anything no. you ever had. It'll, it'll look like a it'll look like a cow's tongue. Well, cheers Gentlemen. to the to the return. To the return. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Ooh, that's nice. It's slightly sweet. Mm-hmm. The 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 few notes of peat that I got on the nose are really only there at the very tail end when the oils kind of like coat your mouth. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's very subtle. It's very, it's like, like not what I expected. Yeah. I thought it was going to be really bombastic, but like it's really chill. It's really smooth. Very and, chill. 
Yeah, and that ending note is not. It's like one of the best scotches either. I've ever had. Because it's oh, not bothering for sure. me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's not trying to like. It's not trying to fight me, which is like I think that's what. I think that's what we all want. Honestly, we want a scotch yeah. that's like at least like reminiscent of a feeling of being able mm. to sit on a porch while it's raining. Yeah, it's very and knowing, pleasant. And knowing that you can't do anything, like fire is going on, like Guys, on you know what Pete's in the house. A lot of people say that. You know that, what Pete smells like? <laughs> Go ahead. It kind of smells like when you walk into the, to the classroom on like Tuesday morning and Jimmy was just next to you because he's at the door winding up the pencil sharpener and he just sharpened his pencil. Pete smells like sharpened pencils that are edible. I was actually going to say this whiskey, if you were to paint, if you were to embody Van Gogh for a second and paint this whiskey in your mind, I really think that you would be sitting in an apple orchard in Scotland where the bogs are a few miles away and a light rain dusted the orchard. I think you just cursed me by talking about the apple orchard. Literally, I have an apple tree. I'm working under it the other day. I'm like, what if an apple falls and hits me on the head? Like, what is his name? Edison. Um, and I discover gravity. And yeah. as you're talking about it, I ram the glass into my tooth so uncomfortably. <laughs> Karma. I would be you unfortunate. Are a, you are a robot. Oh, for like okay. Five seconds. Yeah, that's not that. good. For like five seconds. Interesting. Nope, still a robot. Never mind. Okay, they've come. <laughs> they've come and claimed Anthony again. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm gonna. I'm gonna move on and smell number two because I wanna. I wanna oh, save some gonna, of this. Okay. 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 We're I wanna go, like be able to go time. back and forth. Okay. Okay. A little bit. This second one is a rye whiskey. Oh, oh. and I should. I should. I totally forgot. So this first one was from a company called Famous Grouse, and the first this, th- number eight. Yeah, yeah, and this is actually a, um, I had it pulled up here. So the famous grouse is in Perthshire, Scotland. They do blended whiskeys. They, they initially, at least, wanted to do blended whiskeys that could be shared and savored all over the world. They've been open for over 125 years, and they have an entire film, a short film, on their website that goes through their entire story, which is pretty cool. Cool. They have a ton of different whiskeys. The one that we're trying today is the Smoky Black, which they describe as smooth, aromatic, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with soft, smoky notes. And it is a blend of rare peated whiskey. And I think because. that's why this gets so subtle and has so many subtle flavors is because it's a blended peat whiskey. This second one... Hmm. Is a the stunning whiskey. Stunning. Yeah, it's a Danish whiskey, and it's a rye whiskey. Oh, that bottle is attractive. And I okay. smell rye. Actually, I think this is one of the most rye-smelling whiskeys I've had in a while. It's a sweet rye. It's not a hard. I was gonna rye, say it smells like Christmas. But it smells. So that's rye. Yeah, it's this is a sugary rye, like Mm -hmm. almost like a baked rye pastry. Very interesting. This is like a cookie. It smells like a rye cookie type of deal. It's very, very for sure. This is enticing. And that kind of actually goes exactly to what their notes are. Vanilla, rye, berries, berries, mint, butter. I don't get any of the butter or pepper yet. The butter is the cookie, I think. I see. I could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It kind of turns it into a baked good more so than just the rye. I feel like the butter mellows the, it out. The butter is like the bed that all of the flavors like sit on, I yep. think. You know what? I get a little bit of that lemon, like a citrusy note. I could get that. I could get behind that. Yeah. I don't get the praline. I don't know what a praline Anybody? is. It sounds like suppository. Mm-hmm. 
It does help you poop. It does. Very fiber rich. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'm ready to taste this. I, I took a sip. Oh, okay. Hmm. 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 Weird. Hmm. Am I still a robot? Mm. No, 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 you're good. Your yeah. your voice. You're actually... just frozen. Yeah. Oh, now your camera's working. Okay. Everybody's camera kind of looks weird to me right now. There's like a huge storm going on. Guys, oh. I'm a little disappointed. Oh, maybe you're hosting it in... because we're doing three flavors in a row, and what? we could have had like one good one in every like week, and now it's all going to be downhill. It's like wow, Anthony, the, don't don't reveal your your opinions. We're all too, happy so far. Too soon, <laughs> but I, I I will definitely say I'm not underwhelmed. I will say there is a <laughs> note in this whiskey that I do not like. This is entirely a a, a, a an opinionated is, thing. Is that the praline? Uh, <laughs> no, it, it, I gotta, I gotta piece it out. It, it's a very interesting part of the flavor. It's right in the middle. What is a praline? That so, so we just mentioned that it was like a it's fibrous, a like um, confectionery. F- yeah, Wait, so oh, praline. It's is a cooked a mixture nut, of right? sugar, yeah. nuts, and vanilla. Huh. Yeah. yeah. It's like a With candied... Often nut, ground into a thing. paste it's to very... use for a pastry or candy filling. You know what I think it is? What there is, is it? this note of kind of bitter, uh, funky cinnamon that's right near the tail end. It kind of takes over the flavor for just a second and then lingers on the palate right near the end it's like bitter funky cinnamon it's got like a, a twang to it almost okay I, I don't know if i quite enjoy that well, particular flavor well the thing I is can see how somebody would like it i can see that this is a small part of it it's a small part of that entire like kind of flavor well, the experience. thing is, so, is ahead, that Anthony. like for decades now eric's been convinced that if we were in a fight he would win but the, but i know that you know like how everybody's allergic to cinnamon it's a poison well for eric it's like times twenty thousand. it's his kryptonite i just always have a pack of cinnamon in my pocket oh just in case and he throws just in it case. in my eyes right before the fight starts so you're saying you have pocket sand cinnamon i just go and it, he'll cinnamon. smell it and he'll run away He'll you just always have he'll pocket jump. cinnamon. You're like, I'm out of here. He's like, I got you, bitch. <laughs> 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 oh, <man. laughs> oh my the god! Cinnamon in the eyes trick will always get me. Okay, are we a being eight and nine, or are we going straight into ten? Okay, so ten is interesting. Ten you told us not to look at the page. So I told you smell the page. page. It was a uh, bad no. decision anyway. No. I would give it away. Wow. You sniffed it anyway. You I can't absolute believe this, man. Absolutely. Get him off the podcast. Just get him off the podcast. What are we Anthony, doing? Like, what because we, like, because are we I just had a billion dollar idea. Like, why do we, billion dollar point? idea. Listen. I don't even know. I just I had the best idea in the anymore, world. Dude. I don't okay? even know you. Okay. For our audience. Okay. okay. It, this makes us famous. This is the whiskey talk. We give them scratch and sniff versions of stuff like this so that they can scratch and sniff what we're drinking. And maybe they can have a little lick it too. They can have like yeah. a little lick it strip. <laughs> they can lick it. <laughs> we're, we're gonna Willy Wonka them, and it'll burn. You know, because it's a burn. It was. F- and this piece of the wall tastes like poisonberry. Poisonberries. <laughs> oh God, it is poison. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so. So I want you to smell and try this whiskey. Okay. This is from a company that we have tried. There are two things I want to see if we can distinguish just based off of smell and taste. Whether or not we can figure out 
It's a gorgeous color. What what brand this came from? Because I think their brand is pretty unique. This this should have a very different flavor. If you can remember so, kind of the region this is from, it'll kind of get my you. My first inclination was this just doesn't smell that great. But now I know what it smells like. It smells like you just walked into wall. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Because the other thing I want you to think about is that this is a finished or uh, whiskey. Oh. It might be a bourbon. I, I got to check that real quick. But it's a finished whiskey. I want you to see if you can pick out what, what it's finished with. it was finished with. What barrels was it finished with? Because I think it's very present on the nose. It was finished with those palette. barrels that they uh, use to store all of their film at Walgreens. Because it smells exactly like a Walgreens. Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's actually... It smells hysterical. like a Walgreens, man. <laughs> it, it does. It smells like a department store like Walgreens, CVS, or the um, the abandoned section of Walmart that nobody goes to anymore. You're welcome. I'm just... I'm just... I'm tell just us, so. Tell us we're wrong, Matt. You're tell not wrong. wrong. That's the tell thing. Tell us we're wrong. That's the problem. You're not wrong. It's just that you misuse your intelligence. <laughs> Maybe not using it for good. <laughs> you know, the, the reason, reason why Lex Skynet happens, goes bad. Okay, like exactly. <laughs> like fuck. Okay, what is this finished? In? I know right. what the answer is. Okay, Anthony, nope, do not I just, give I think me another answer. analogy of something. Or, or, or okay, okay, I don't because my nose, I, my my wife's cooking chicken, and all I can smell is chicken and bourbon. Like the first two apparently pair really well with baked uh, with uh, uh, baked chicken because uh, mm-hmm. these they smell incredible. Mm-hmm. I can't even. Uh, hey, Nat, I can't even. Write I need you to know. Smell this. You can three oh, no. D print guitars. Okay, I just learned that. I think that's wild. There, there, there. Are, I, I understand that you can. There are things. There are definite things in this world that you can, and then you have to ask yourself: there, Should you? And I don't know enough. I don't know enough filament. about guitar. I don't know enough about guitar making, like building a guitar. I'm not a luthier. To be able to go into a uh, mm. CAD system and well, that's okay make because since there's so many awesome nerds out there, they've already made them. You just download it. You don't have to do any work. That's also true. I just feel like they'd be bad. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like you would have to tell me that you were building it in a fully all-in-one system that would actually like print the entire thing all as one because if you're putting it together you're gonna have some intonation issues like crazy ramonier barrels so anyway it's like tequila or something i i knew it was gonna get the name wrong Armonier. i can't remember the name i want to say like armonier or amonier i have but it's like a tequila barrel or something yet, like on. that i think it was <laughs> something we had it, you said the name of it, and I think Nat and I both had no idea that it was an alcohol. Or at least I had no idea it was an alcohol. I was like, is that a fruit? Hmm. The hell yeah. is that? With a, with a cat meme? <laughs> Wait a sec. What, what the hell is that? You so on the on the flavor palette, they give us some notes: raisins, maple syrup. Don't tell me what it is. I'm not telling you what it is. I'm actually fully <laughs> avoiding the things that would give away. Okay. Anything. They they give us some raisins, some maple syrup, some spicy get rye. Get that dry. One of the things that I get a lot of in this whiskey is butterscotch. Butterscotch. Yeah, it's okay. got like this buttery smooth flavor with a little bit of that sweetness that's almost like a honey-esque sweetness like a a, a buttery sweetness it's not like 
candy. It's more like a toffee butterscotch sweetness type of deal. Brandy? So you're going with brandy for your finishing barrel? No. Hold on. I'm trying to So while y'all do that, y'all know how cat's tongues are like sandpaper? Cow's tongues yes. are like sand wall. It's like sandpaper, Anthony. but like scales of sand. It's, it's like, it's weird. <laughs> Anthony, it makes sense because if you think about it, they eat and they use their tongue to like pull grass, it up, I think. Right? Yeah. And they, I don't want to, exactly, you know how people say you get exactly. a cowlick? Like I've been told my whole life, I got like I got so many cowlicks up here. That must have hurt when I was little. <laughs> when when I was uh, younger, I used to me and my uncle used to go fishing a lot, and he built like a pond, and we used to go fishing for catfish all the time. I don't know if y'all have ever I've been, been catfish a few times fishing before. But there's <laughs> yeah, they, so there are some types of catfish. I'm trying to focus, guys. <laughs> there are there are some types of catfish, and no respect catfish, for my flavor experience. <laughs> <laughs> they their bottom lip, like their whole bottom of their mouth, is it's covered sandpaper. yeah in this sandpaper backwards facing teeth type of deal, and so you have to hold them a certain way. But every now and then you have to like go in there and get a hook out or something like that if you want the catfish to survive if you're catch and releasing which we did sometimes um versus catching and f cooking where you could like, isn't catfish like an, after them. isn't aren't catfish like a invasive no not invasive aren't they like they're a bottom fish? feeders yes yeah, yeah. i thought the fish okay, were then people the like picture. shoved okay. their go hand ahead. into a Sorry. hole and got <laughs> bit and pulled it out that's that's called noodling, so, my guy. Yeah, that's called noodling. And certain catfish don't have this issue, right? Mm -hmm. And if you grab in and don't move and hold the fish from its insides, essentially, and then pull it out, you can actually hold its mouth open and then get your hand out without, like, scratching. But every yep. now and then, you make a mistake and you rub your finger along that bottom lip or rub your arm. And it just, it, it's like glass. Yeah. Like you don't even feel it and you'll look down and you're just be, you, you're just like leaking. little stripes of uh, blood just pouring out because yep. it's so sharp for some catfish that you don't even register you know, on, mm -hmm. on initial. You don't feel contact. the tear. Yeah. Yeah. It just like shreds. The top layer of your skin. Now, for the most part, it's superficial, so it's not like you're not, not going to see somebody having rivulets of you know, blood coming down as they noodle. But like, yeah. every now and again, there's something gets that all like fishermen rinsed. need to hear. Yeah. There's a reason that mammals came out of the ocean to oh, walk God. on land. Leave it alone. Just, just get it. Stop going for back. Sure, dude. <laughs> Guys, I have. I don't know if you've ever. I, I'm pretty sure you guys have had this experience. I have serious thalassophobia now. Like deep, deep fear of deep water. Dude, like, I get weird water. feelings at the yeah, ocean. Yeah. Like so, I'll like I'll be enjoying our time. We're okay, yeah, and then man. suddenly I'm like Spidey sense. I don't know what's happening. Get out! <laughs> Everybody out! <laughs> no. no, Anthony once left me with a shark. I believe it. <laughs> Literally. I believe it. Literally. He peaced out. Shiny foot hammerhead. Fuck. Feet away no. from me. Uh, Guys. Uh, like 20. a 10 foot hammerhead. No. No. Swam past me so close that it pulled me along for a few seconds. Bro, I would like no. to defend myself <laughs> and, and reiterate that, that I would. Um, Eric Rebuttal? was swimming around the coral reef <laughs> and he was like, this is weird. Where's all the fish? There's no fish here. There's no fish here. Eric, why are there no fish there? Because of fucking monsters around the corner. You turn around, you see the monster, and you're like, that's why there's no fish here. You learned that lesson the hard way. That's fair. Fair. 
which Fair. what he's trying to say is chilling. that you needed to be more observant. <laughs> I was just chilling. Anyway, glassophobia super bad. Um, there's been a few movies that have just kind of like triggered it more. Um, it's like there's one on Netflix. It was like a sea monster movie, and there's a scene where there's two people floating in the water, and one of them's facing downward, the other one's swimming up. And the one facing downward is paralyzed and not looking away from the depths. And the one swimming up sees her face and turns around and sees this. Dude, I'm getting (laughs) getting anxiety thinking about it. And it's a massive head, two big glowing eyes looking up from the depths, right? And it's huge. And they get the scale of it and everything. And the freaking head goes deeper into the water and then just disappears and just goes out. And I'm like, you can't be that big and just be like, nah, I'm out. Bye. Oh my God. You know, while you take that minute, minute. I just have to also (laughs) defend myself. Cause on that same trip, when we were about to have Eric eaten by a shark before that we hop in, (sighs) Eric tells me to come up for air and he goes, don't smile. I had braces at the time. He goes, don't smile. There's a barracuda. I was like, what? Apparently, barracudas are attracted to shiny things. You got. It. They are yeah. barracudas are, are yeah. attracted to shiny things. That was that was not me like messing with you either. That was me like genuinely being concerned for your safety. <laughs> like I don't know if that makes. <laughs> I it thought better, you were messing with me. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. No, no, no. That's like a real thing for barracudas. My mom has worn jewelry while she she used to scuba dive all the time. She's worn jewelry and sometimes barracudas will like swim by and like cut her arm near the uh, jewelry because they're just trying to like get at the shiny, get at the shiny thing. Mm-hmm. Nope. Right. They're like crows. Yeah. For so water. It's like a, it, that's like a real thing. People have like get slices from it and their teeth are so sharp and they swim so quickly. You Oftentimes what they do is they just bump into you. So you'll feel the bump. But when their teeth hit you, it just does a nice little cut. This number 10 has become but, uh, smelling okay. good so, since I left it alone. They all smell good, guys. They so all this smell good. this number 10 is from our friends in Colorado. Mm. Breckenridge. Uh. So this is a Breckenridge whiskey from the Breckenridge Distillery. It is a port cask finish I've- whiskey. I was going to say port and then I was like, no, I'm going to go with brandy because like, I don't know. I did honestly, I haven't had enough brandy to know the difference between port and brandy, Ports but it's on I, the left I freaking knew it was port. I knew it was port. And I didn't say anything because I was yep. a coward next yep. time. So a oh. podcast finish. So we have had on the podcast, their regular bourbon, which we enjoyed to, uh, uh, a reasonable degree. So just to remind everybody, that what was, was our rating. I was like a general five across the board. Really? Yeah. So we generally like their their regular whiskey. This is their regular whiskey, but a uh, finished in a port cask. It's still good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I I genuinely think it's it's a pretty pretty good one. I like a so, little sugar bomb. That's nice. Now that we've kind of got to enjoy. These three whiskeys. Mm-hmm. Anthony, you want to run us through your your gauntlet here? All of them. We're not going one How at a time. Are you them, buddy? No. Yeah. No. 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 This is this is one of those cases where we dive into the depths of the deep. Oh. We conquer our thalassophobia. No, we're not. And don't drown say that. ourselves in don't say that. a no. little bit of whiskey. No, no, no. I don't I, I was vulnerable in front of you guys and, and I now know I should not have. Absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. There will be no deep water talk after this. Thank you. I don't know. What's annoying Moving is on. that the uh the first one, number Andy, eight, now that I've gone back to it to double check, um it now has that taste at the end that I'm not a fan of. So it's almost like when I started with it, it was good. And now that I'm going back to it, it's different. So starting with it, I would be like, this is like 
uh, a six or a seven because it's a scotch that I don't dislike. But I'm thinking maybe I'll just give it like a, a solid five because I think it's still a scotch that I would probably like if it wasn't for drinking these. And then um, it's not like super special, but it, it's good since I don't hate it. It smells, smells, it smells all right. Maybe a four or a two, maybe a four. Let's do a five. How about a four? <laughs> I'm just messing Locking around. What's um, happening to you? <laughs> oh, I, 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 I did fail to mention to that I've been like sick for the past few days. I'm on that whole like uh, on vacation, gotten sick immediately thing. So, same. Yeah, same. <laughs> this is the best I felt all day. So, all the energy is coming out. But yeah, I would put I would put that one out of four, maybe a five, and oh shit! Yeah, thanks for making me go through too. God dang it! Sorry, that was that was Eric. That was I'd probably me. pay like first thirty five dollars for this for seven fifty. Um, but it's just because there's things that I like so much more than it. I wouldn't be surprised if it costs more. And for people that really love scotches, like this is probably really good. Um, for the second one, I'm going to have to double check it. So if anyone wants to entertain the radio silence. Yeah. I'll enter. I got Matt, it. Go, go with the famous grouse. We'll go one whiskey at a time here. Okay, cool. Uh, famous grouse uh, for me. Are we so we're not doing first, second, third. We're doing actual ratings. Yeah, so we're yeah, gonna yeah. start from the very top. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. grouse for me is a interesting scotch. Very nice. I originally thought that this was gonna be the best scotch that I've had. On second tasting, it's flat. In the sense that you get flavor up front and then nothing happens immediately after. And there's like a there's a lull period in between you getting the smokiness and that pillowy kind of like uh, soft vibe uh, from the texture of the actual uh, spirit. And then immediately after it's like it's gone. There's nothing. It's like water almost. And maybe that's like a maybe that's a um, product of having to sample all three of these at the same time but i will say that after having other strong flavored uh experiences with this the strong flavors from the other um experiences bury this so i don't get the depth of um tasting notes from this that I do from the other two, even after tasting other things. So for me, I would rate this at a three. It's interesting. I think it's a great entry into scotch just in in general. Um, I would still tell people to go ahead and try this one, but I would, if there is a better experience, there's a better starting point for scotch that exists, I would definitely refer that over this. Because I feel like this just this this is a scotch lookalike, but not a scotch an authentic scotch experience. What would you pay for? <clears throat> I would pay I'd pay fifty bucks for it for it. Because I would I would still give it to friends who are like, I'm not really into whiskey, but I do still want to drink with friends. To be like, hey, here's something. It's akin to what we're drinking right now. You'll have something to go ahead and talk about as we go through the tasting. We can talk about it as we go ahead and talk about video games or whatever. Yeah. I I think I follow suit with a lot of what you said. Gotcha. This is, this is a very easy experience Mm -hmm. for a scotch it isn't harsh it isn't too peaty it's generally kind of this sweet water nice easy experience it's kind of one note Mm -hmm. i agree that it it doesn't really encapsulate a scotch in the same way other scotches do i think if you drink this and then say oh i like scotches you're going to be in a weird place because yeah. this doesn't really have those scotch flavors. 
I think there are scotch flavored whiskeys that do the same thing but better and have a little bit more evolution that I've had. And so on one hand, I'm like, it's an easy drink, but I don't know that I would ever start somebody here or recommend this one. So for me, it kind of it kind of falls flat. I I, I think mm -hmm. I'd put this at like a two point five. It's mm -hmm. it's something that I I definitely could see myself drinking. It's like very close to something that I would recommend for somebody, but I think there are better options out there. And the one saving grace, though, we got a price point at. Thirty dollars, right near me. I mean, that's so for, impressive for yeah. like a thirty dollars scotch, a blended scotch that is honestly a pleasant experience through and through. Mm -hmm. I think it's missing some of the things that I like, but I, I definitely think there's a spot in the market for this for mm -hmm. people who want to enjoy some of the light scotch flavors, but not go into this harsh world of whiskeys there's something here for mm. sure i would honestly before you had to told me about the pricing i probably would have taken mine down to 40 um i just finished um the scotch and i even took like a big swig and usually whenever i try and take like a big pull from any of the um libations they tend to give me a little bit more of like their story. If that makes any sense. Yeah. They, they tend to like give you a little bit more depth of like what it is they're trying to um, convey, whether it be spicy or sweet or confectionery, whatever. This literally just gave me more smoke and then was gone. Yeah. So. It's interesting. It's interesting. But like at the same time, it's like it's it's scotch with the training wheel still on. Yes. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. But I think there's a place for that, for sure. For sure. For sure. I would I would say, like, this would be, like, a... If you were doing, like, a flight of scotches and you were trying to introduce people to, like, the world of scotch, I would start here and be like, this is the flavor of scotch that labels scotch as scotch. Like, when you taste this, understand that that is what makes a scotch a scotch. Yeah. I think going We're from this to a... a more integrated scotch would be a really good stepping stone for so sure like to start somebody out put this and a heart or like a a famous scotch Lefroy right Merle, after it Glenn like Levitt. a Lafroy, like a, yeah. a, a um, Ardbeg or something like that mm -hmm. be like you might not like the Ardbeg you might not like the Lafroy because they're, they're very punchy harsh. Heart. They, they, yeah they have <laughs> those scotch flavors they're peaty yeah but Go in and try to connect the dots of where the flavors overlap, because that's really where the scotch part of this lies. I think this is Ardveg. Hold on. Bruh. Bruh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Anthony, what do you think about our, our second choice here? The Stani. It's definitely better than the Scotch. Actually, you know, let me take a little. Bit. But the weird thing is, I think uh, I would maybe have to lower my rating of the Scotch to a three. I think the reason I gave it a four was because I was like, oh, it tasted so good and smelled so good at the beginning, but now it doesn't. Um, which is confusing. I wonder if there's something design wise there. But for the Stoning. It's like a similar thing happened, but since it's better than the scotch, I want to give the stoning a four. Mm. Maybe you want to give the stoning a four. Okay, maybe I could give it a five. I'm literally <laughs> only saying it for clarification. Holy moly, Mr. Robot. S sorry, I tried to mute that real quick. Try to mute me. Click it fast enough. No, I tried oh. to mute myself. I, I thought I heard robot sneeze real hard. You were also like crazy robot That's for a second. You're back. Yeah, now. I'm not sure about you the stoning. Like maybe I could give it a five because once again, it smelled amazing at first and tasted really good. But 
now that I go back to it, it's not nearly as impressive. Maybe it's because we're drinking three whiskeys at once. I don't know. So I'm going to give the Stawning like a... Super syrupy. A four and a half. And then pay 40 bucks for it. Huh? Nah. He wasn't hold ready. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, but yeah, I was wondering about scotches. Like, what is there? What if there's a design aspect of some drinks where it's like really great the first smell and the first sip, but after that, it's not great? There's think- definitely probably like an actual uh, nose behind that. I would have to say. I I. I think that's one of the reasons I like higher proof, like barrel picks, barrel proof, single barrels, things like that, because alcohol evaporates so quickly in these types of glasses that as it's sitting here, your whiskey is mellowing out. Yeah. And so for people like us who have tried a bunch of whiskeys have kind of their palates defined to accept some of the higher proofs when we have low proof whiskeys like this i think all of these sit around the 48 percent mark when we have lower proof whiskeys around this mark after 10 15 20 minutes they're gonna mellow out a lot because a yeah. lot of that top layer of alcohol is really going to evaporate and bring out the subtleties of the flavor but die down in their complexity. <laughs> oh so my god. That is one reason I like barrel that proof painful. for sure. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Um so the stoning. Okay. Um <sighs> this thing is sugary. It's a off the top it's a sugar bomb. Like very in- very enticing. Uh, it's got a lot of flavors kind of going on with it. The rye aspect of it is really interesting. Um, the butter acting as kind of like a bowl of this cookie experience is really nice. At least I think that was bu- the butter. Yeah. But um, <sighs> the only thing that's really missing from this is like a defining uh, flavor that like acts as the backbone for all of these things to kind of grow out from. I thought it was going to be the butter because I was like, oh, this is like a cookie. But the more I I've drank it, the more I'm like, I don't know where this thing is going. Like it goes in multiple directions and then it doesn't decide on anything. It just like it's every single time I've tasted it, it ends on a different note. And that's enticing in the sense that you can taste something and have and find something new every single time but when it comes to a enjoyable spirit just in general i want to be able to say that this flavor palette this running theme from the beginning to the end of of the uh of the drink of the experience defines what i'm drinking and i don't get that from this let me go ahead and taste it just to make sure I'm not speaking out of my yeah, ass. Yeah, while you were talking, I was like, maybe I should have given it a 3.5. <laughs> maybe maybe 4.5 is too generous. I'm not sure. I kind of want to change my rating system to like... Yeah, it... it just, <laughs> Anthony needs to redefine... It just lands... It here. lands in this... And Eric, I think you spoke about this. It lands in this bitter cinnamony kind of area at the very end of the taste of the end of the flavor. That's just like, it's a nothing burger. Like it leaves you with a bad memory almost like, it's like, Oh, look at all these flavors that we kind of front loaded you with. Now here's the stuff that we couldn't get rid of during the process. Sorry, but try it again. Maybe like you can get used to it. So I would say that this is a, 2.5 2.5 for me. Okay. So um, a little bit less than the scotch. For a little bit less than the scotch. I like the scotch more just because like it was an enjoyable experience. I feel like this one 
after after getting over the initial like honeymoon phase of it, I I cannot say that I enjoy every single pull from it. And I can say that I enjoyed the scotch. Like I enjoyed the pulls from the scotch. It didn't do anything, but I at least enjoyed it. With this one, that bitter aftertaste really leaves a sour note over the entire experience, especially because it's so pronounced at the very end. For me now. Uh, I would pay $35 for it. Um, Yeah, I think I follow a lot of the same logic. Damn. I'm two for two, guys. Yeah, you're two for two today. I I think we're on the same page here. All all of us, really. I I think y'all kind of hit the nail on the head. I do like this one better than I like the scotch. Really? I think this is just a personal preference thing, though. I think the scotch was too one note. It was too subtle. It was too light. It didn't have enough complexity. This one at least has some evolution. There is that bitter note at the it, towards the end that I don't particularly like mm-hmm. from the Sani whiskey. But at the same time, around that, it does have some complexity. It does evolve okay. into these different flavors. I generally like rye flavors more than I like other flavors. Rye's are some of my favorite whiskeys. So a good, like if you have that rye flavor and a little bit of sweetness, I'm all on board. Mm, yeah. like, it, it's not, it is overly sweet for me. I think there are better ryes on the market. For sure. And here's the thing. There are some ryes on the market that are astonishingly cheap that I think are way better than this. So I'm looking up the price now, but I, I think it's going to be hard to beat. Um, For me, I, I really think I sit this just above the famous grouse at a three. Okay. And I really wouldn't pay more than... 25 for this oh okay yeah that's um, fair what the are we only looking unfortunate at? thing is that it looks like this is a 60 to 75 dollar mm. whiskey and for 60 to 75 i i that's just wild to me i i couldn't like i couldn't does imagine it, does it taste any better coming from a bigger bottle like what are we missing <laughs> no. i don't know there's just no way there's There's no the weird way. thing is, no I think I Eric's $70. just too correct about the whole, you know, alcohol evaporating problem. Because it's not like we've talked excessively and they're the, taking too long to drink our glasses. So, no. the flavors, when at least when I first checked on these, like the first time we went through, was far better than when I went to check up on them for the ratings. And for you to be a good whiskey, you've got to be good for like half an hour to an hour. Because when I pour one of these on a random night, I'm not going to go and finish that in less than five minutes. It's going to be like an hour. Yeah, you're going to you're going to you're going on a date with this whiskey, right? Like there's a beginning, middle and an end. And you got to be present. for So like. And I will say, across the board, none of these whiskeys are present for all of those pieces. No. They just yeah, that's the interesting thing, because the no. the last one is a little bit better than the rest for me. The nose is gone. The nose is left to date. But luckily, the taste on number 10 is mm-hmm. still good. So it's still kind of there, but it's thinking about some other girl. You know, it's not thinking about me no more. <laughs> why why did you say it's thinking about some other girl though i think that was a freudian slip it's thinking anthony, about some other guy anthony <laughs> anthony no 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 see whiskey doesn't see gender eric, eric oh, doesn't okay, understand eric that's doesn't understand bad. when i listen <laughs> to when i listen to the songs nowadays i'm listening to those uh songs where the this female singer is talking about the girl she wants to date that's dating a dude, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, she like, my run. girl is you thinking mean? about another girl. 
You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the girl I'm on a date with thinking about Good another luck, girl man. type of thing. Like yeah. <laughs> luck. Uh, Anthony has high hopes. <laughs> high hopes. Anthony Anthony's married. He has no hope. <laughs> what are you talking I love about? my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love my wife as well, at, for sure, for sure. Anyways, <laughs> so okay. what would the you, last what would you one, last I'll probably yeah, be yeah, one to point five ahead of you guys again because I guess I'm just nicer. Uh, <laughs> I'll mm. give it a five, and I'll pay forty. It's not bad. What? You would drink this every? Is day. that how that works? Is that how that oh, wait, works? Sorry, we were supposed to give the bet. We have to give the badge. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It's not. I'm s- okay. We've okay we've separated it now a little bit. In that, that was a, we, yeah. We're that was a genuine question. Daily drinker part of it. I was not being rhetorical. <laughs> so fives, fives for me are generally daily. Drinkers. I mean, like I could drink it every day. So if it's a five, you know what? No, it's a four point five. Pull that out every day, That's and I'm like, staring down the barrel of a forty five. I'd pay forty five dollars for it. Four point five, forty five. Four point five, forty five. Do you want to give any reasoning towards your decision making nope. at all? <laughs> okay, cool. Now I will say, funnily enough, Anthony did give the other Breckenridge the highest rating really? of a six. Oh. So he does generally he like likes the Colorado whiskey whiskeys a little bit more than we do. I'm a mountain man. What can I say? So you're saying you would you would give this yeah. a four point five is what? <laughs> and then forty five dollars. I'm staring down the barrel of the four to five, man. <laughs> four five four okay. five four hey, five. That's fair. Oh my God, Nat, what what would you give this Breckenridge? A two. This Breckenridge is like. Oh. So like I don't I don't have a long story for this one. I, I don't. like fuck this whiskey. I hate it. It's terrible. It's not even that I hate it. It's Get this just out like of here. like what is whiskey just, really? It's not It's that. just so inconsistent. Like it's unfortunate. Like I caught the butterscotch um note that you had talked about um earlier in the in the episode as I was sipping it. And it was like a flash in the pan. It was gone. Like I couldn't like after I identified the flavor, it never showed up for me again. And maybe I'm just broken. F- newsflash. That's not true. <laughs> My taste buds are absolutely fine. But going through the experience of drinking this thing all the way to all the way to the bottom. I'm still left with like a kind of whelmed ex- uh, experience. Yes, the beginning of it was really nice and it smelled uh, interesting. The port finishing is definitely something that uh, gave it a little more, a little bit more um, panache and or um, je ne sais quoi. But um, as for the actual. I don't memor memorability memor memorization no oh wow the spirits are taking over my brain uh, any One form of mem- three net. the memorable experience that can be taken from this spirit is just not present there's no again there's no sticking it has no legacy there's there's no central i it has damn anthony it has no legacy. It has forgotten the names of its fathers. It has, <laughs> <laughs> the family like, name that was passed down for the, generations from generations has been it, lost. It's been lost. Like so, I as much as I would love to be able to le- be ho- head over heels over this, it was an interesting time. But other than the sweet kind of nose and the general butterscotch-esque flavor palette and some other interesting little divots here and there i got i don't i didn't get much from this so i would say this is a three for me uh, and i would pay 30 bucks um got something my new rating system just spurred into me at the end of your spiel there uh, number eight is uh-huh. uh, 
meh. Uh, number nine is uh, sure. And number 10 is okay. Meh, <gasps> sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Well, I, I mean, okay. okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If if somebody offered if, if somebody okay. offered me 10 sure. in a glass, I'd be like, okay. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I can get behind that rating. Yeah. If somebody gave me like <laughs> eight, I'd be like, <laughs> I like this new rating system. We gotta we gotta flesh this out. I'm, th- I'm gonna start adding great, on to this for sure, for sure. A, th- a third rating. It, it's it's easier for me because I I swear to God, <laughs> the numbers I throw out at you guys, I don't know what the hell I'm saying. <laughs> that makes sense. I will so say it's, it's it's so funny seeing <laughs> seeing the numbers. <laughs> uh, so it's boo, boo, meh, Wh- eh. Oh no no boo meh. Where do you put meh. a boo boo? <laughs> okay. <laughs> a boo boo is not a rating. It could be yeah, a rating. Like, <laughs> 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 oh my god! No, you know you, you take a drink and it makes you go okay. up to the girl at the bar and you go a boo boo. That's that drink. <laughs> it no. gives you wings. It's like Red Anthony. Bull. Anthony. 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 Gives you wings. I'm so I'm so terrified of you like during dating. Like during the time that you actually dated, I'm so terrified. <laughs> so scared for the woman who we hey, went up to and said, Hey boo boo. Was it a big nigga basket? <laughs> I I hope they ran. I'm really <laughs> fast. At least one did. I'm really at fast. At least one did. I'm so that's that's not that's, that's not that's not that's, helping. That's not helping. <laughs> I'm so she's glad not that, that you fast. Found your wife. Yeah. I'm so. In, in fact, no. I will. I will. I will go actually out on a limb. I'm so glad that Ash found you because I'm pretty sure she was out. She was. She had to find you. <laughs> Like you, you were out running after something. She stopped me. Oh, <laughs> she stopped me dead in my tracks, Eric. So your ratings. All right. Yeah. So the Breckenridge is really interesting. I will go ahead and say, I actually think the Breckenridge main bourbon that they have is better. Oh, so for I sure. gave that one a five. That one's that one's definitely better. This would not be a daily drinker for me. Mm-hmm. It's a little too sweet for my palate. Mm. I typically it's really hard with a ruby port finish to make it not too sweet. Mm. You know, Angel's mm-hmm. Envy is kind of a outlier in that respect. In okay. that they can do that port finish and keep some of the bite and flavors in. I this is a hard one. There aren't really any bads to this whiskey but i wouldn't say that there's a lot of outstanding stuff either i think it kind of sits in the same spot as the stunning whiskey for me i'd really put this as a three i would drink a glass of this it were if it were in front of me if somebody ordered it for me stuff like that like i'm gonna drink it this is totally a, a, a fine drinkable whiskey I think all three of these really are drinkable whiskeys, which is why they sit in the 2.5 to 3.5 area for me, depending on mm-hmm. the day, probably. But I, I think I'm going to give this the same as I gave the Stunning, really. A, a rating of a three. I would drink this. I would not be upset with this mm. as a whiskey. I think people should try it. It's sweet. Nice. Tasty tasty there's no negatives to it it's something that's just easy to put down i think this is more of a dessert whiskey like after Mm. dinner after having a steak or something super umami like you've had a lot of savory stuff this might be a good way to end the night type of deal i think this and the snotting whiskey Mm. both really sit in that category for me um if you've had a lot of strong flavors this would be a good pairing for it but Again, it's one of those where I'd I'd really want to see this in the twenty five to thirty dollar range, you know. It costs, and unfortunately, 
it looks like it's around 55. <gasps> Better than the Stoning whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, not a big price disparage. Yeah. I would, to speak on one of the notes that you gave, I would definitely see this as a dessert uh, whiskey. That being said... I would I would hasten to say that if you are tasting something that is a very strong flavor that could possibly overload your palate, you will not be able to smell this whiskey. Like if you have anything if you have any strong spices within whatever you're eating or or uh tasting, go into the tasting of this bur- of this whiskey knowing that you probably won't get too much all alt- off the nose until you get pretty deep into the sipping of, of the actual spirit. Yeah. And I will say all three of the whiskeys today are very subtle whiskeys. Mm-hmm. I think if you're eating anything with or drinking anything or enjoying anything with very strong flavors, these, all of these whiskeys will kind of fall flat. Yeah. They really don't have a lot of presence to them. They're, they're more of after, You've kind of sat for a while playing a board game, like something where you're kind of like present you focus on something for the else. moment, yeah, you're focusing on something else. And this is a side hors d'oeuvre dessert type of deal, yeah. Well, dude, that, if y'all are ever here before that, if y'all are ever here, there's like a little trail, like a whiskey bourbon winery trail near me and we have to go like there's a winery oh. that's really close by me we have to and huh? oh my god they're so good they're just so good what have i been pl- playing <laughs> they're just so dang good nothing i can't remember the last game i played that actually counts because all i've done is logged into oh, wow. what is that game uh vampire diaries um Oh what is my it called? God, Vampire Vampire v Rising. Vampire Sorry, I can't explain. V-Rising. My wife and I. But, okay. Uh, I grew up watching Smallville as a kid. I'd get home and Smallville would be on after high school uh-huh. and every yeah. other grade that there was. It is a great show. Great show in a way. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's also hilarious and terrible in many ways. I mean, yeah, it's it's in very and so it's very it's fun to make fun now. of. To be fair, it's no, very it is don't go back and watch fun it, guys. with the right don't go back and watch it person that both enjoys and mocks it with you because yeah, there's a lot set. to mock and there's a lot to enjoy. Yeah, okay, um, so we're rewatching sure. that, and I'm in the middle of an area where one of the literally I didn't realize this. Both actors, both main dudes from Vampire Diaries, are in Smallville. And right now is like the older guy. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, oh, mm. I know where he's from. But yeah, I played V Rising, if you could say played. And by played, I mean I logged in and made sure that our castles wouldn't die so that eventually my wife and I can, like, you know, beat the game maybe <laughs> before the the server resets. Bro. We'll see. Um because we have a very hard time beating games, like completing games, basically. But instead of playing games, because I legitimately can't remember the last time I like properly played a game, I've actually been making a game with my wife. We have been participating in the Pirate oh, Software right? Game Jam. And so we are Let's working go. on finishing up some things for the prototype so that it can be submitted on time on midday Wednesday. Yeah. So we're almost done with that. So I've been playing my our game playtesting, I guess. Very cool. Yeah. So that's been fun. Is it nice? I can tell you what it is. Um, So so the restrictions for the game jam uh, the community voted to combine the res- the two themes instead of have one theme versus the other. Basically, it went down to there was like eight themes to jo- to vote between, 
There was a round at which one was chosen. There was a round at which a second one was chosen. And then when it came to choosing between those two, everyone was like, put both as an option. And everyone actually voted for both. So Alchemy and Shadow won. And Alchemy is the theme and Shadow. Now the thing is... One. Oh, shadow. So one. the theme is alchemy and shadow. Okay. Okay. Combining those two, and there's a lot of different okay. ways to interpret okay. alchemy and shadow. There's some generic ways that most people think of, like transmute, like transmuting things, mm-hmm. and literally a shadow, like light and dark. But you know, it can be mm-hmm. any sort of mm-hmm. light and dark idea, like shadow government, or just good and evil, or literally black and white. And then alchemy can be many other things. Um, But what we ended up coming up with was something that was good for educational purposes and not too insane artistically. We are doing a combination of Pong, Brick Breaker, and like a fighting game, like imagine Stratagems. That's like the alchemy where you go and attack or defend. You're like applying things and Otello in a way. Um, If you can imagine you have your pong, right? And there's two, there's two players trying to hit a ball back and forth, but you don't hit the ball back and forth. You each have your own ball because you're playing brick breaker and you're trying to break those balls between you. And each time you break one of the, sorry, break those bricks between you. Each time you break a brick, it switches colors from like black to white or white to black. And now the other player Mm -hmm. could hit that same brick and flip it back. And it's kind of a tug of war. You're trying to break enough bricks to pass their line. Like if you're looking at like a tennis court and you're trying to pass a certain line. And if you get, Mm -hmm. if you break a brick that passes that line, you have now won, right? But at the same time, you're going to have transmutations as we call them. This is the alchemy where you can suddenly make multiple balls appear or stretch or shrink the paddle or make a big ball or make mini balls Mm -hmm. and have different things going on with those so basically it's like a fighting game meets pong meets brick breaker and the ideal situation is pvp it's a 1v1 and you're trying mm-hmm. to manage some interesting challenges by both all, trying to hit your ball. And you have to decide, do you want to transmute your own side of the court or the other player? Because there's penalties if they miss the ball. Do you want Do you want to give them a bunch of balls? Obviously, if you're going to shrink someone, you're going to shrink them. And the last thing yeah. that we aren't going to have ready probably for the... For the um, prototype is i want to we want to make it like rounds eric you've played rounds with me i don't know if you know what rounds is not it's a game where every time you lose the round like the set you get stronger so the idea is you're going to be playing like the best three out of five or four out of seven and each time you lose you unlock a new transmutation to apply to your enemy. Oh. So that's something that we're going to have to play with and see if we can make feel good and stuff like that. And eventually we want it to where you choose. So do you do you sandbag the first round to go ahead and get mutations, but possibly two yeah. to go ahead and get crazy? Or do you squish the person that so to the point where regardless of the mutations, they right. can't keep up with you. And yeah. Style? And so there's a lot of playtesting for us to do to find out what works well. Like, do we need a few standard transmutations? Cause is it kind of boring to start with none and then to only have one? Like, do you start with three? And if you get to round seven or, you know, you've lost three, you, you have like six total transmutations to play with. We'll see. Ash Ash really wants to do some other more interesting ideas, which is like the transmutations create like super combination things. Like, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't, yeah. Because I'm thinking like deck builder almost, where like 
you have certain blocks mm-hmm. that you can you can hit that uh, go into your whatever alchemical bank, and depending on what you get, yeah, based on what you hit in your round, okay, determines that w- what you can then do on the next. Well, round. you remind Almost me of another like thing we based. talked about, which is in normal brick breaker, you're hitting the bricks, they're they're breaking, and then suddenly a power up starts falling down towards your paddle, and you have to catch it to enable it. Mm-hmm. So that's another right. thing we might try to play test and see if should there be skills or transmutations that you receive and then you only have like the number of executions of it as you've collected mm-hmm. perhaps. And the, and so maybe that's yeah. how you start. Maybe you start with a nun. You collect the ones that fall. But if you lose, now you get a permanent one, one that you can use mm-hmm. on cooldown over and over again, and stuff like that. So, I think yeah. that, that could be really cool. Like, I, I'm also thinking, like in my head, like look, when I look at it in my head, I'm thinking like, okay, there are different play styles of it where people will intentionally end their turn early because they've already mm-hmm. gotten what they're what they've wanted versus people who play as long as possible because they're still fishing for that one resource that they need. That would be really cool. Like combo. if the cool. insane combos only occur if you collected one that fell to you plus something mm-hmm. that you you're hoping mm-hmm. to get it. If you get that, you're like I'm going to win. So you yeah, you have like the utilitarian version of playing, which it, or the gambler who is like, no, I'm looking for this one thing. If I don't get this one thing, yeah. my build doesn't pop off. Yeah, and but the, and, and the crazy thing is, like, the funny, it's funny that it's already a challenging game when you're just playing like Brick Breaker, basically, with no transmutations. And then you're like, yeah. you're trying to move your paddle and you're also trying to like, it's like, it's an interesting multi. Yeah. You yeah. have to multitask real <laughs> yeah. hard. So we're having sure. fun with that. Yeah. Nice. That's super dope. Oh man, get the hell divers esque like kind of like thing where you have Tragedies. to do directional yeah. stuff on one hand while you're trying yes. to keep the paddle from doing uh, that's that what we're doing. I, I really want it to do cool. controller sure. because I feel yeah. like that might feel the best. Um but of course I've been mostly playtesting mm-hmm. it on the yeah, keyboard. 100%. And when I uh, for the for the game jam, you have to submit it on itch.io as a web game. And for the life of me, I could not get a browser to register two separate controllers. One controller will control one player. The other controller will control both players. So Yeah. I have I've I have actually heard annoying. this issue before. Like that's difficult. But yeah, we might have some crazy single keyboard situation. Ooh, that looks delicious. Oh. That, that's got some <laughs> food. <laughs> I love my wife. Have y'all heard of Bukati? I love my wife. I think it's Bukati. I love my wife. It's a really thick noodle. Like yeah. a thick uh, Italian noodle. This Is that Bucati? called Bukati? Yeah. I, I, it starts I with a B. It's called Bucati. I, There's, I it's a thick Bukarati? Italian no. noodle. Your noodles Bukarati. have reminded me of it. I just had it tonight. Oh my god, this I, looks so good. Bucatini. Bucatini. Because there it is. Bucatini. Bucatini. I was like, it sounds like a character <laughs> from JoJo's. <Yeah. laughs> I probably butchered that, by the way. For for sure. Who's for sure. Actually knows Italian. Like don't. <laughs> Don't ostracize don't, me. Don't like, come at me, bro. I, don't, I can't cr- pr- pronounce it correctly. But it's B-U-C-A-T-I-N-I. If I uh, is like, but yeah, I mean, uh, Eric, what have you been playing so that Nat can enjoy at least a few warm bites of food before it gets cold? <laughs> Unless he wants to talk I, first and then dive in. So my main thing, I yeah, can yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Go yeah, for yeah. it, Nat. Go for it. So, Nat. um. I obviously have been on vacation, so I have not been able to play any video games as of late. However, I did come home and binge play Hades too. Like I, I, saw that. I spent like two days. <laughs> I saw. I saw. I kept getting notifications. I was like, "This guy." I spent two days on the 
the same game. It was the same. It made me feel young again, honestly. Hey. And then, like, I was driving, like, we were driving somewhere. I was like, uh, it was like, I think I was going to work out or something. And I was like, you do realize it's ones and zeros. And I, I literally looked at my adult self and I said, you need to shut the fuck up. I was about to say, life is <laughs> ones and zeros. <laughs> This how we. Sh- this how we stay alive. I don't care what it is. Uh, it makes me happy. So you need to okay. shut the hell up, so I can enjoy this game. Nope. <laughs> but um, as I've gone through this game, I'm telling you guys, if you haven't already started playing the game, it did so good. Please do because it's so fun. It's so fun. It um, I'm still trying to figure out how to get aspects because I've beaten the final boss a few times on both ends of the game. I won't say anything past that point, but um, I've beaten it on both ends. They haven't gotten further in development to go ahead and uh, branch uh, fully like branch out and basically give you the game. But it's a really good game, guys. I'm, I'm floored with the content that they're actually giving to these kind of, to these like early access games and saying, Oh yeah, this is just like, it's a game that we're still working on. It's not done yet. And I'm like, how is a, how is a studio able to do this and just like drop crazy games? Like this game yeah. is so good and it's not even done. Dude, super giants of beast. They're just freaking monsters. I love it. So good. So, um, I can't say anything because I don't know how far you guys are into the game. Yeah, I don't, also don't want to. Yeah, you can't spoil it for me. Yet. I don't, I'm, also I'm, don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, yeah. I haven't but, been um, able to play it. I, I, yeah, yeah, you'll see. There, there is a game that is uh, out now called Cataclysmo that looks really interesting. I've seen that. Yeah. It's a tower defense kind of styled game with a little bit of exploration, but like the destructive environment aspect of it, where like your castle is literally like something that you would put together in Minecraft where like it takes up an entire hemisphere of your like world or whatever. Not obviously not that big, but anyway, massive castle, but waves of monsters just come every night and just fuck your shit up. And I'm like, I was watching the videos of it and how it realistically kind of like breaks down as, as monsters come at the walls. And I was like, I could get really mad at this game. <laughs> I could get really mad at this game and be very upset for a long period of time. So I will probably hold off on this on Cataclysma for a little bit, but definitely a game to look out for for people who are looking at um, tower defense with like a twist or like an elevation. Definitely cool. Um, one last thing I wanted to kind of touch on i will be trying out um something like wicked this way comes oh is it something wicked oh yeah no rest for the wicked thank you oh my god i will be trying no rest for for the wicked finally i'm very excited for. if you want to know how Um, the game is it's great i'm still waiting for the multiplayer uh update but still i feel like it needs still waiting yeah but uh i'll try I'll try that. Uh, I have a friend who just recently bought a PS4, and I'm like, and he's like, oh man, we could play Hell Divers. And I'm like, but half the world can't. <sighs> yeah. Half the world, like the inequality of it all. Yeah. So, but he's like one of my friends who I almost never get to play video games with, like, regardless. And he's been like a childhood friend since since awkward times let's we'll just call it that like since uh, since like awkward uh child childhood nat so i will pick up <laughs> the cursed sword regardless of if it will like label me as a fucking um uh, it's actually a supporter but it's impressive how many people for a good aren't aware of what happened or just got like completely fake oh, used yeah. to oh they fixed it because they said they were fixing it. Yeah. I will I will definitely be telling him. I will definitely be telling him and be like, hey, we can literally just play anything else. Like, we can play Diablo 4. I will play Diablo 4 I think over this. people have also been yeah. even... I, f- I feel like people have been talking something. about Diablo 4 recently, but I'm not sure. I, would, I think, it, it I was think my last where, point. Yeah. It, it's where it needed 
to be mm. at the least right now, for sure. Last I think, note on I think Diablo it's 4. Good. Yeah. As a, it's, I, I, it's doing better than good, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's. I think for the audience that it is for, it is really good. Mm-hmm. I I think it was good when it. Uh, to be fair, I'm one of the camp that I thought it was pretty good on release. It was just it needed more polish, and it was, was missing it a lot of things. It was something where if they had called it a beta and said we're going to release in a year, it would have been like this is great. This is a step in the right direction. So I'm like, now it's it's fun. It's good. Okay, okay, I can get um, back. I can get behind so, that. So, yeah, I guess before before well, we I wrap lied. up, I'll give. I'm so sorry, but oh, while Matt was Anthony. talking, I remembered that I actually did play a game. But before I played the game, my wife yeah. mentioned because I didn't really. Uh, she texted me. That's kind of what the game. It, we're going to change some things, but like that might help you visualize what we were talking about for the game that we're working on. That's just. Yeah, that's just like a uh, oh nice mock up. Yeah. Anyways, so I played a game, and I Nat, you reminded me of it because I remembered. I realized that if I mentioned that I played this game, you'd be pissed off. Um, <laughs> the reason that I upgraded to Windows Eleven was to see if it would actually make this game playable for me, because something insane has happened in the Sea of Thieves. <laughs> guys there is a ship now in the game that you can command that has 10 cannons it has a front facing giant fire cannonball launcher that will both break and light a ship on fire it has skeletons that will man your ship they will heal your ship they will they will shoot at enemies. You can dock two rowboats to your ship. It's called the Burning Blade. And if you defeat the Burning Blade, you have the option to let them sink and take their treasure or com- or become part of their crew and command the Burning Blade for as long as you desire. And it is a world event in which you have a- no cap on how much money you, you earn. You can keep on going around the world and leveling up the burning blade before you eventually try to turn it into the like great fire Lord Zuko. Um, and then you get paid like millions of gold on turn in. If the server doesn't take you down and you have like a pool of skeletons to help you that they attack and every time you go to one of these areas in the game you have to go and solve a puzzle and if no one stops you you like replenish your pool of skeletons and you make yourself more valuable and stuff like that and it's just so interesting that they finally have a cool ship they finally have a ship in which npcs are involved this ship has three decks below it has not just like what is it four or six cannons on the sides but cannons up top where the person turning the wheel is at the helm it's got cannons up there for them it's insane and and really cool and it was enough for me to play the game again so what you're saying so what you're saying is that the game decided to add an experience where the person who's playing becomes yes, a boss. end game. You are the boss. You become the boss. Goal to take care of. You're the final you boss. The boss. Which is cool. It is really cool. Which is cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. That's all, that's all I have to say. It's a liar. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> If I didn't have food in front of me, I chew the you didn't have food the fuck out. and a brand new PC you to flip the desk. <laughs> oh my god, Anthony! I cannot tell you how much that Sea of Thieves gave I me know. such a freak. It, it's, it's such like a, a real game, of now, a game. It's on PlayStation. It's Anthony. 
you said it's like well, I say like because the only game. thing that you earn in the game is cosmetics. Still, Anthony, how was that? A I understand, game, dude. It's about the the reason that it counts as a game for me is because every time you go on a voyage, you create a new and unique memory. And I can make other I can make memories. You can in make other, memories okay, in other games, but continue. most other I'm games so are sorry. so continue. repetitive that those memories merge and you forget those times. I will never forget the time that Eric brought a snake onto our boat, named it Henry, got pissed off every time I mean, I got pissed off every time it tried to kill me. Then Eric accused me of killing it. We actually have footage on my channel that proves that I might have accidentally killed it, but not on purpose. <laughs> and like the time that Eric and I what betrayed a, a huge alliance and Eric like swam a barrel around an entire island and I got them all dueling just to like pass the time and they weren't paying attention all of a sudden and Eric blew everything up and we almost got everything and it was it's just like I don't there's not many other games where I can't point back to when we were playing V Rising and like I, I mean I remember stealing some stuff twice those are my memories from V Rising is when I stole some stuff twice, which is what happens in Sea of Thieves. You know, it, it, it it's a yeah. It's not the programmed experience; it's the unique sandbox experience that is like so awesome and hard to find elsewhere. Interesting. I think the sandbox experience, the sandbox experience for games, is definitely a very attractive. Uh, mm -hmm. facet of gaming. I think that it often is used as a vehicle for engagement as opposed to any form of scalability of the actual play style of the game. Like, you don't play the game any differently from start to finish. Like, you can, you can facilitate and you can use the tools differently. I'm not saying that. But it never moves past introducing new tools. Yeah. There, there's a there's a set of tools, and then yeah. it stops. Yeah, and that's the weird there's thing is that there's else. so many you can there's fight so many gamers that it's like same tools. Yeah. I'm bored now. You know, like I want to unlock better yeah. and bigger and more powerful things. That's what I want to do, and like. I totally understand that because I feel that way too. But um, I don't know why I'm able to play Sea of Thieves. Like when I go into it, it's kind of like I, it's it's literally like going mountain biking or going rock climbing. Like you said, the tools that are there are the tools that are there, and sometimes they introduce new tools. And mm. the biggest thing that stops yeah. me from interacting with that game is when those when it's just not playable because it's like rock climbing or riding a bike and it, and it can be very enjoyable and I don't know what's going to happen this time and and sometimes it's really really awesome and I can't get that somewhere else because no other game has that bike has that setup has that granularity it's kind of like that board game that Eric introduced me to called Scythe where there's just a level of tact yeah. Til tactility where you're playing tactileness you put you got all this Tactile, stuff to manage yeah. and it's so satisfying and that's kind of what sea of thieves has going for it kind of yeah yeah i can see i can see that i can see that so this is my final note on it honestly because hatred i've already kind of made my i've said my piece before no i don't hate it you're I don't disappointed hate in thieves. it, and and I get that. It's, I, I I'm disappointed because like <laughs> I want to I I want them to t I want them to take this idea of basically like putting me on a boat, and I want to be a pirate god. Yeah. I want to sail the cosmos. 
take me all the way to the fucking top. Sea of Thieves could could literally scale all the way up into like you are going you are sailing through nebula. You sail off the edge yeah. of the world and you go out into space. Like that is the level of imagination and like um, scalability that I want to see. I want to be able to fire a cannon that shoots out like a comet that goes across the sky. Yeah. That's what I want. I want you to go up. Give me the full fantasy. Give me the f- whole hog, like start from grassroots. Tell Dude, me I totally story, agree. At least think about it. They've There's done a good job of making a good game, like in terms of like the mechanics, right? Now go and do something insane with it. Yeah, it's a great game. Like the 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 base like idea around it is great. I think that. It falls under the same category that No Man's Sky did at the very beginning of launch, where like it's yeah. a test for yeah. a game style. If I were to if if I were given that entire kit, if somebody gave me the entire like build for Sea of Thieves, it was like, hey, make a game, uh, yeah, make a game out of this. I would it's, make yeah. the game that I just described. Yeah. I would take that idea and, and it'd be like, look, we're going to develop this even further. I'm going to go ahead and create another world that exists as a mid game. And then I will create a l- end game that exists within yeah, this dude, it's expanded kinda like, world. It's like how V rising that it, that proved involved, that like, their ugh. game mechanics were great with like battle, right? And their other games. They're like, we've okay. We found something people mm-hmm. enjoy and this is good. Now let's make something even more complex and cooler. That's what they, that's what they need to do. It makes sense. It makes sense. But like, so like, in my head, a perfect example of this, if you're looking at Sea of Thieves and you were like, okay, how do you scale that even into that idea? Like, let's say you go out into the galaxy. How is that any different from the worlds that you've just, like, you've just uh, scaled the player out of? Create Galactic's um, treasure maps that lead into storylines that then build into you finding out why it is that you are mm-hmm. able to sail off the edge of the world. Explain like explain why you are there through, I don't know, anything. Because somebody has done it before you. Somebody has sailed off the edge of the world and is now searching for something. And now you have to find out why it is that they are existing now and why you have to go and search for this now. I don't know, man. It just... The possibility, it's so obvious. Like, I am not, I'm a, I'm okay at creative ideas, at least okay. These are not hard ideas to stumble upon. And I understand that, like, you are limited by what your studio is capable of based on your budget. I just don't understand why you can be presented this, like, level of reverence as being rare like the developer of banjo kazooie the developer of i'm pretty sure they did conquer's bad for a day yep you had this pedigree you had this ability to tell stories where the fuck is it that's all i said it would be great it It would be great it would be great (laughs) Eric, your thoughts? <laughs> uh, well, un- unfortunately, I think we got to wrap up. I gotta, I gotta. No! I got people waiting on me. Cliffhanger. So, Commercial. Unfortunately, my 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 games. No. We'll have to wait until next week. I have some fun stuff to talk about and some stuff that I wanna. I'm gonna try out. Damn so, Anthony, we ran there's, over. There's no, no, no. Y'all are totally fine. I thought it was good discussion. I, I think the Wait. Sea of Thieves piece is so so cool. Any good I, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. Like it's such a cool mechanic. Like mechanically, it's a perfect game. Mm-hmm. From a situation setup, it's a perfect game, and it's one where just like a No Man's Sky, like you were saying that, like the more you fill a great toy room with toys, the more fun it is. And so it's one of those at sooner or later, it'll be the perfect game. We just 
you know, we're not there yet. We're, we're not. We're gonna keep working towards. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it has that potential. So it, it's cool. I'm excited for it. But, but yeah, can we get a and, teaser? Good fun stuff. I I have a lot of fun okay. Elden Ring stuff to uh to to talk about. Uh, some cool concepts there. I wanna I wanna dive into, and then there is a like. Go look up some of the new Path of Exile stuff because I'm gonna talk about it. Path of Exile two. Did you see what they just released, Naughty. dude? Path of Exile is yes. I'm going to play it this week. Come join me. They're <laughs> popping off. But with that said, next week we'll be talking a lot about Path of Exile because there's a lot of cool stuff there that I want to talk about. Um, and we'll try another awesome whiskey. Yeah. Out. So. But yeah, I am. I am glad to be back. The train is rolling, and uh, we'll catch you in the Bye. next one. Bye. Bye. Oh, cool. Peace, y'all. Love y'all. Bye.